Presenting The Fifth Wheel by Gertrude Berg. by a million loose ends. The city is enormous. The routine is endless. The time is crowded. And now suddenly, in Mary's smile, in her simplicity, in the faith she has in a perfectly ordinary life, the Brooks find an atmosphere of calm. And then, just as suddenly, when he least expects it, when he least can use it, Joe Brooks sees an opening. He is a wheel within the wheels of a large department store. And another employee, a Miss Wells, an artist and illustrator comes to him with a new idea. It's an out, a chance for both of them to do something on their own, a revolutionary design and process in glove making. But they need money to register the idea and money to start it off. And neither of them has a place to which to turn. The frantic hopelessness of the thing drives them together and their common purpose becomes a symbol of escape. At home, life goes on with Mary placidly fulfilling her duty. Why can't we ask you folks for the money? It's for us. It's for you. It's for both of us, Margaret. What's happened for us in the four years we've been married? Nothing. But now everything can change. I don't want anything changed. Why not? Can you can you tell me why not? You want to live this way all your life? Yes. Yeah. Well, I don't. Why well, aren't you happy? No, are you? Yes. Yeah. Oh, Margaret, what are you afraid of? There's a world outside of these four walls, one that you've never seen, one I've never seen. We've only heard of it, but it's there waiting waiting to be used and lived in. Now, why can't we live in it? Just a little money can do it, darling. I know it. Miss Wells knows. Wells? Margaret, why don't you like her? I don't know. 
made it because she liked you. Well, does every woman that I know like me? Yes. But not the way she does. Joe. Joe, I, I don't... I, I only... Joe. Oh, my. What's the matter, Mother? Oh, nothing, darling. A story. Didn't you ever read it, Mary? Oh, no. Oh, it's beautiful. I can't read all the big words. But look, uh, how would you say this word? Yes. This one. Oh, how you say it? Don't you know? No. Didn't you ever go to school, Mary? No. Isn't that wonderful? Wonderful. The wonderful bath, maybe. Don't you care? It's not really important. The only important thing in the whole world is money. That's what my father said to my mother. To. Mary, have you any money? Me? Hmm? Money? Oh, little bit. What are you going to do with the money? Oh, maybe I'll be by its farm by and by. It's cow? Yeah, it's cow. Okay. Maybe little peak. <laughs> or maybe nice piece of ground. Make it garden. Have it made a nice tree. Come it summer, have it apple. Come it winter, sit on rocky chair. Oh, by golly. Mary go sit on rocky chair, maybe hundred years. Have it nice big stove. Keep it nice warm house. Oh, that'd be good, you know. That'd be good. When are you going to buy the farm, Mary? Yes. Oh, sometime maybe. Oh, sometime maybe I... But... Oh. 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 Yes, you, you, you even know me? Well, in a few minutes, Mary. Oh. Just sit down at Hysterion. You, you... Sit down at Hysterion. You, you know it's up? Well, later, maybe. Oh. That's not every cell phone number, Marjorie. What do you think? Shall I call him? Money isn't everything. And I told her you said it was. Uh, Janet, please. Margaret, you talk to him first. He's your brother. Oh, get the number. I hope he's home. You, you be sick, Janet. I'll be bringing the spoon and give you a cigarette. Janet, not too much. I'm only going to see five Janet, please. Call every Margaret, he's your brother. Why shouldn't he help us? You call him, Joe. All right, all right. What do you think, Margaret? Do you think he... Oh, I don't know. Well, if he doesn't, there isn't another person in the world we can turn to, not one. Maybe says money isn't everything, and I said... Janet, please. Uh, hello, uh, have him a 40290. Uh, will you talk to him, Margaret? Uh-huh. Why is money, money? Hush, darling, father's on the phone. Well, Mary got a good job. Mary got a good, good job. Oh, no. Mr. Brooks is on the phone. Uh, hello, are, are you getting that number? Excuse me, Mary. Janet, listen, when I'm on the phone, I, I wish you'd... Uh, hello? Don't they answer? Hello, uh, who's this, Dorothy? Oh, I was hoping she wouldn't be here. Uh, Dorothy, is Everett there? Well, darling, why did you have to have to feel with her? Well, I thought I did. Uh, uh hello, Everett? <laughs> it's Joe. Well, pretty good. How are things for you? No. You don't mean it. Well, listen, when did that happen? I'm terribly sorry to hear that. No, Everett, I wish I could. I, I'd be happy to. The fact of the matter is, I was just going to ask you. Uh, listen, Everett, you, you've heard me speak of Miss Wells, have you? Oh, well, I thought you did. Well, she's an artist. She's worked with me for years, and... She came to me with an idea. Everett, listen, it's a chance of a lifetime, a revolutionary idea in glove designing. It, it'll change the whole business. And there's a, there's a fortune. All we need now is enough money to, to get a patent at once. And when we have that, I, I won't be worried. Uh, you wouldn't know where I could raise some money. 
Oh, yeah, well, I, I know that. Well, thanks. We'll be seeing you. Bye. He's lying. Please, please, Maybe we could get a loan from the bank. On what? The only thing I get put up for security is my life, and that isn't worth anything. And it may be to me. And to me. I know that. Well, not that. Now what? What's that? Drink it, milk. Drink it, milk. We'll just have to forget about it. That won't be easy. You've got a pretty good memory. Uh, Mary, would you mind fixing me a cup of strong black cup? Strong black cup? Strong black cup? Strong black coffee, please. Bless. What's the matter, Miss? The matter, Miss? Would it come to? Yes, Mary. Money. Did you let me have about a million dollars? Maybe. Maybe you only got four hundred and seventy six. Huh? Four hundred and seventy six. Four seventy six. Oh. You didn't get money, Mister. Mary's going to buy a farm with her money. Mary. No. Mary. Uh, you didn't get money, Mister. No. Uh, I'd be get it right away. Well, where are you going, uh, Mary? The bank's closed. It won't be open until tomorrow morning. Oh, there's been no bank. I, I do have it money in my wallet. I, I, I be get it, Miss. Come here. Come, I, I be get it, Miss. I be get it. Go. Joe, you can't take our money. Why not? Suppose you lose it. Suppose I do. You're only taking a chance. That's it. It's the chance I must take. It may come to nothing, and if you lose it, you'll have nothing. You'll never be able to give it back. No, Joe, you mustn't. How can you take what she's slaved and sweated for her whole life with what she's added up in pennies? Joe, I won't let you. Margaret. Margaret, look at me. This is the chance, the one we've always wanted. I have to take oh. Margaret. Margaret, I... I take it from a blind man. And now that Mary has given Joe Brooks the key that will open the way for him, where will the passageway lead? It may lead into a blind alley. It may lead to wealth and power and position. But one thing will surely happen. It will bring Joe and his partner together. What does this mean for Margaret's family? <laughs> drama develops with great rapidity, and it is Mary who saves it, without saving herself. And it is Mary who remains unchanged, still strong, ready to go into other homes, into other stories, when the brooks have passed into the distance of other lives. Kenneth Roberts speaking. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.